I thought I was done with this guy. So, did Mr. Beast ever plant 20 million trees? No, 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 no. Wow, we actually hit our goal of planting 20 million trees. That's insane. Mr. Beast? More like Mr. Boast, am I right? Wow, amazing graphic. Team Trees intro. Congrats, Mr. Boast, on reaching your goal of planting 20 million trees. Though, from now on, I'm going to say you're raising $20 million, which is an outstanding feat. I don't know why you're trying to pull it on the old rigmarole to make this fit a meme. Now, this Team Trees started with a tweet from Mr. Bose. He's got a tradition, you see, of giving a milestone subscriber, well, something stupid. He's giving out pennies, popcorn, cookies, whatever little bits he can get millions of. And by Donaldson's own admission, he just kind of dumps it and leaves. But they didn't have to earn their prize. I kind of just gave it to them. You know, I showed up, I dumped a couple million of something on their lawn, and I kind of left. You know, I didn't really make them earn their prize. Imagine that. So at level 20 million, he reached out to his fans. What should I give my 20 million subscriber? I was going to give them 20 million pennies, but I procrastinated, and I think it's too late to get them in time. Yes, he did say him, and he also used two with one O. But that's not really a presumption, okay? Putting their heads together, Reddit rallied around an idea. It wasn't nonsensical, like giving someone 20 million pennies. No, Reddit wanted to do something positive. Reddit wanted 20 million trees. Mr. Boast teased interest, but was he committed? Would he plant 20 million trees? The internet sat, waiting. Mr. Boast returned with word that he had something in the works and that it would take a while. Still, alluded that he would in fact get those trees planted. More and more time went by, and a little more, and finally came an announcement. In a video proudly displaying several counts of planting ineptitude, Donaldson announced the big scheme to plant 20 million trees by 2020. You guys spammed me to plant 20 million trees on Twitter, Reddit, all over my comment section, so I made it happen. This sentence is bad, N not because of the misplaced participle. It's bad because it's unethical. By the end of the video, it's clear that Donaldson and company had not planted the sum total of trees, and they never planned to. In fact, the sentence turned out to be the beginning of a seven minute long advertisement for Team Trees, a fundraiser. See, Donaldson spins that he's developed some sort of deal with the Arbor Day Foundation where they will plant a tree for every dollar donated. The entire video, and I mean it when I say this, the entire video is actually just a long form awareness ad for Team Trees, a fundraiser to raise $20 million. See, Mr. Bose pulled the old bait and switch, but you know, it's just to make things simple, okay? One dollar equals one tree. Now, I'm only 2% metal alchemist, but I do know the law of equivalent exchanges means that a trade-off must have equal value. Funny thing is, <laughs> the value of money is very well defined, but the value of a tree, let's say, can be varied. Nonetheless, throughout the entire campaign, Donaldson and his proxies make the claim over and over again that one dollar equals one tree. To me, this equivocation is the most questionable caveat of the whole kerfuffle. Let me explain. It may seem trivial, but three very important things changed when Donaldson conjured up this answer to online pressure to plant those trees. First, by working with an established foundation, Donaldson relieves himself from most of the follow through and all of the culpability. Second, he places the responsibility of getting the money onto his viewer base, Lastly, and most sketchily, he prevaricates donations with a direct action. One dollar equals one tree planted in the ground. Okay? So if you donated one dollar, you did it under the presumption that it would be used to plant one tree. This will become important later. Mr. Bo's plan, from a business sense, was a good one. The Arbor Day Foundation does have the same charity navigator rating as the Red Cross and their involvement meant less responsibility for Donaldson. 
At this point, all Donaldson had to do was utilize his clout as Mr. Bose to activate his viewers, fans, and their auxiliaries into raising most of that money. Like Mr. Bose, many people began to see this as an opportunity for exposure. Yes, Team Trees took off with unprecedented fanfare as YouTubers, corporations, and billionaires all seized upon the opportunity to buy some goodwill and attention with a donation. Elon Musk, billionaire and brave environmental opportunist, donated $1 million. Though, I suspect if he really wanted to make a change and wasn't so focused on legacy, he'd probably spend more of his money trying to re-terraform Earth. To put things into perspective, we can examine the Tesla Model 3. According to research from the IFO Institute, production of the battery alone produces around 11 to 15 tons of CO2. Now, there have been 457,980 Model 3s delivered to dealerships around the world at the time of this writing. In just three years of production, making the batteries of the Model 3 produce 5,037,780 tons of CO2. How much does a tree clean again? According to various online sources, a new forest can sequester 2.5 tons of carbon per acre per year. So to sequester the carbon released in the production of the batteries, Elon would need to plant 2,015,112 acres of new forest to offset CO2 emissions from the Model 3 battery production alone. Yes, this is just production and no, I'm not going to get into charging the things. Um, so how many trees are in that many acres? Well, Utilizing the 8 foot between tree spacing model that Team Trees showcased, there would be about 681 trees per acre. That's 1.37 billion trees. How much did Elon donate again? Because I think he might be coming up a little short. See, what Elon is doing is using charity to deflect from the reality of his industry. Making cars is bad for the environment. Ceasing car manufacturing entirely would solve more than electric cars ever could. But if you look at their website today, you'll find them saying just how much they've saved the world in terms of CO2 emissions. At least that's what I think they're saying. The footnote at the bottom is very confusing and it says, the CO2 saving figures above reflect tailpipe emission reductions from historical cumulative miles driven by the global Tesla fleet. Ugh. Is there a misplaced participle there? I, I don't know. After a bit of digging, I found the study that the 2.5 tons per acre claim that I kept seeing all over the internet comes from. Interestingly enough, it contains a lot of the same information used by Team Trees to justify why planting 20 million trees was the more pragmatic choice over buying an existing forest or, you know, other options. Biomass energy combined with carbon capture and storage processes, BEX, Biomass combined with carbon capture and storage processes, also known as BEX, has been found to possess the best abatement potential within the power and industrial sectors. And if that little caveat, within the power and industrial sectors, set off a few red flags, the honest conclusion comes at the end of the paragraph. There's high uncertainty in its large-scale implementation. High uncertainty in large-scale implementation. This is clearly a well-vetted solution. Among the technologies under geoengineering that we are raising concern about is BEX or bioenergy cap carbon capture and storage. We think that BEX will exacerbate the security and conflict issues around climate change, not just resulting from the adverse consequences of climate change itself, but as a response measure to climate change, BEX would, would definitely worsen the issue of conflict over land, over water, and over productive resources that are needed to produce massive amount of bioenergy crops um, to address um, global warming, and also um, legal, transboundary, and international issues involved in the carbon capture and storage part. I can only speculate, but I think this has something to do with the one dollar equals one tree equation. I mean, Think about it, it's so simple. It's good. It's almost too good. Where does the $1 valuation of a tree come from? Team Tree's website doesn't go into it. They don't talk about it in the video. 
The Arbor Day Foundation has been surprisingly quiet about this whole entire operation. Why don't they even mention Team Trees on their website? If I had to speculate, I would say it's because they've quantified the value of their core service. The tricky thing for the Arbor Day Foundation is they place a monetary value onto the planting of a tree. And now they're kind of beholden to it because it's already happened. They've already had the fundraiser. They've already received the money because everything goes directly to them. It doesn't go through Mr. Beast. If the deal had just been raised $20 million, they could do flexible things like say, our expenses went up. We can't plant this many trees. Or we can plant more trees because trees are cheaper today. The Harbor Day Foundation is expected to plant 20 million trees for exactly $20 million by 2022. Checking their net income over the past four years will reveal it hovering around 45 to 55 million, which is a ton of money. But it also means the Team Trees donations would instantly increase their tree budget 40 to 45%. One risk to an instant increase of working capital like this is mismanagement of money. And this comes from being unprepared. It can take many forms, including overspending, increased administrative costs, long distance management, and well, basically just getting too big for your britches. They can't save it like nonprofits like to do. They can't have a surplus of cash. They must plant those trees to comply with the promises they've made in the advertising that Mr. Beast put out. Reddit demands it. The internet paid for it. Mr. Beast is already taking credit for it. You have to plant those trees and each one has to cost one dollar because that's what we donated for one dollar equals one tree that's how donaldson sold this campaign he cannot deviate why let's do a thought experiment hypothetically what if a tree costs more and not by a lot no 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 not a two dollar tree we're not talking two dollar trees here what if their estimations are just one cent off what if a tree cost one dollar and one cent? It doesn't seem like much. I mean, there's probably a penny on the ground right here. I'm looking for one. I, I don't see one. Dang it. Should have set that up. Darn it. One cent is just one percent of one dollar. But if we examine this at scale, the problem becomes apparent. What's one percent of 20 million? 200,000. That's $200,000 or 200,000 trees, depending on how you look at it. In this scenario, will those trees get planted? Who's paying for them? Will it get paid for? I don't know. There's no transparency when it comes to this aspect of the plan. And that's the problem. Really, that's the big problem. Transparency is non-existent in team trees. So let's talk about another hypothetical. Hypothetically, it comes out that a tree costs one cent less than a dollar. That's when things could really get messy. What's the plan for that situation? Does every donor get 1% back? Does the Arbor Day Foundation keep it? Do they plant extra trees with that money or do they give their CEO or president a bonus? What happens? Does Mr. Bose finally get to give someone 20 million pennies? Because ironically, that's how much this would end up being. You know, all these what if scenarios make me think that there is a buffer, okay? Maybe it's one cent, you know, plus or minus. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 50% or even more. We don't know. And that's the problem. That's a range of 200,000 to $10 million or more. You know, it's completely invisible to us. We don't know. And I, I don't want things to get twisted because I know how estimations work. The only way you're dealing with huge numbers like this or a huge plan like this is to estimate. That's not the issue. If they have a buffer in place, meaning Mr. Beast and the Arbor Day Foundation, they should have disclosed that information in an obvious manner to anyone donating to Team Trees. That's what transparency is all about. If they don't need a plus or minus buffer on the tree average and are certain they can cover the cost of one tree equals one dollar to the cent 20 million times, then I think we should hire them to handle the finances of the entire world. <sighs> Personally, I had to know how much tree costs. So I looked it up. Seeds are cheap as fuck. You can get hundreds for a dollar, but those aren't trees. Saplings aren't exactly trees either, but that's what we're sold when watching Mr. Boast and Co. plant in the video. Saplings come in various sizes and ages, 
and interestingly enough, two different sizes appear in the video. The first size is with Mr. Bose's crew, and it's around 18 to 24 inches, which is like a year or two old. I don't know. I'm not a tree expert. These vary in price, but I found bulk prices for blue spruces, an evergreen that offers photosynthesis year-round for 63 cents per tree. And that's at like 500, you know, bulk pricing, not 20 million bulk pricing. Not exactly $1. Keep in mind, this doesn't include labor or shipping costs or all that extra stuff, but considering the volunteer force of the Arbor Day Foundation and their nonprofit tax exempt status, I think we can just take those off as a wash. The second saplings actually seem to be of the Arbor Day Foundation working, and these trees are only about six inches about a month or two old. These are even cheaper at just 30 cents. Wow, I hope they're paying those volunteers. The lack of transparency in this fundraiser has me asking a lot of questions. Like, are those trees gonna be planted on public land? If not, who owns these trees? Will, will we get to visit Mr. Bose Forest? Or did we just pay for some millionaire's tree line? Could the Arbor Day Foundation theoretically set up a Christmas tree farm for profit with that money in those trees? Who knows? That's why defining expectations is paramount when working on such a large scale. So, like I said, Donaldson started this campaign unethically. He hadn't made it happen, he hadn't planted 20 million trees, everything was a farce, he lied about it, it was all a sham. And on top of that, there's so many unanswered questions that bring up so many things, you know, like, what is this? Is this a joke? Is this a joke? Why are you opening the video saying that you planted 20 million trees? Is it supposed to be funny? Is it commentary on clickbait culture? Like, oh, I didn't plant 20 million trees and they're not going to be planted until 2020, but I'm going to say I planted them right, right now. I wanted to make a happy video here, I really did. There's nothing I love more than watching a community work towards a common goal and achieving it. And I love trees. But what the fuck? I don't know Jimmy Donaldson personally, but he seems like a kind enough person. And it seems like he might actually want to do something good for the world, maybe. And that's his problem. He, he's not committed to it. He just might want to do it um he's just a good guy with money trying to do good things with money and everybody's telling him he's doing a good job with money and everything is good with the money and he's really helping people with money and he's making a difference with money and he's activating a generation with money and it's changing the world with money and he's uniting a community with money and now he's the green messiah sent down from the ethernet to save us from that smoke monster from fern gully it wasn't always about money for donaldson he used to work on the cheap counting to 100,000 in one video stuff anybody could do it was simple it was viral it was free then there was this point okay a point where Donaldson realized what he set out to do with, you know, YouTube. His path to prominence went from gaming to creator tips to publicity stunts in a straight line. And I don't think it takes a genius to follow that thought process to see that he wanted to be the center of attention. He wanted to be in control here. He wanted to be the YouTube guy. See, the first time he handed out the money to the homeless, it wasn't to help the homeless guy, it was to go viral. Now, everything he does goes viral. Everyone worried about PewDiePie and his web of influence better start figuring out how to address the influence of Mr. Bose. If he continues on this path that he's on now, there's no doubt that he will one day surpass PewDiePie. And unlike PewDiePie, Donaldson is openly trying to influence the world. He wants to be admired for his good acts. It's what drives him to make videos on YouTube. Unchecked, Mr. Bo's misguided pursuit of this attention will have insidious effects within the cultures he's accepted by. We cannot continue to let these game show spectacles of capitalism become YouTube's golden standard of giving. A term I discovered a while back 
is weaponized nostalgia. And it's used to describe media packed with pop culture references to connect with an audience's past. The weaponized part comes from the fact that this is a destructive force. The nostalgia is not being used as a storytelling device, but rather it's being used to tap into existing emotions so that the media doesn't have to provide any real message other than watch our show, buy our merch. So from now on, I'm gonna call what Mr. Bose does weaponized philanthropy because I think his flavor of giving will have long-term consequences on how society as a whole perceives charity and giving online. Jimmy, as an entertainer and a promoter, you're very good. However, your giving is so misguided, you need to get help. And I'm certain you can have the impact you wanna have if you do that. Philanthropy is different from charity. Its focus is long-term. That means solving problems, not treating symptoms. We need fundraisers, but we need them designed to have the most impact, not to create the most attention. Team Trees is a distraction at best, and at worst, it's a fraud. My advice on giving money to charities, do it only once per year. When a company asks for a donation at the register, they're using social pressure to manipulate you into giving. Don't fall for it. You never want to give something if you haven't vetted how it's going to be used. Give your donations all at once, one time per year, and diversify that donation between the causes you care about and vetted. If you feel like helping a cause out at other points in the year, it's super simple. Just volunteer. The reason I'm discussing this is that while Donaldson is still developing as a philanthropist, his power level is increasing exponentially. This man went from giving away $10,000 a couple years ago to raising $20 million in a couple months. Each time giving away a little more, all while upping the ante on attention attracting spectacles. Does he have the foresight and integrity to notice this? Can't he see that every step up comes with more and more and more and more responsibility? Donaldson knows his fan base has impressionable viewers. He has the analytics. The Team Trees website even states, Team Trees is a positive solution oriented campaign and the website is visited by a lot of kids. He knows these viewers will rally behind him and a big cause, just like they did for PewDiePie in the T-Series saga. So I have to ask, at what point will it be enough? Do you have enough friends? Do you have enough money? Do you have enough influence yet? I can say I don't think you deserve a modicum more. Now, I made a $1 donation to Team Trees to see what would happen. I left the message, what happens if the trees are 99 cents? Just to make sure I had the whole picture. No reply, but I only just made it, you know, because they are still accepting donations. Come on. <sighs> One thing I'll give them credit for is you have to give out your personal information, like your name, email, and optionally your phone number, which is kind of sketchy, you know, obviously. But at the bottom, they do include, and we will never sell your data, which is a step up from Honey's privacy policy. You know, check my other video on that. There's no further information shared about the terms of the donation you know, in the email I got, other than one dollar equals one tree. I also noticed how hard they are pushing on the good on ya language. You're a good human and now officially a member of Team Trees. Together we planted 20 million trees by 2020 and we couldn't have done it without your help. If you know any other good humans, use your favorite social media platforms and invite them to join the team too. Ending with that CTA was a nice touch. But maybe you're starting to see why the pseudo cause is a bad thing. There were kids setting up school fundraisers for this thing. Climate change demands direct action now. I wanted to say something else about trees as a solution specifically as well, because honestly, I'm sick of tree planting. Okay. I get it. You think trees are going to save the world. They're not, they're not the answer. Okay. I've seen the trees they hand out to kids on Arbor Day from the Arbor Day Foundation to plant at home. And guess what? They're wrapped in plastic. The directions are Xeroxed onto bleached paper. So stop pretending like planting a tree will help save the world and stop 
pretending like donating to something like the Arbor Day Foundation is gonna, you know, it's the first step. It's the activation. It's, it's us saving the world. It's not. Whatever CO2 these trees suck up doesn't disappear. I know we've all been living on this cartoon utopia where people breathe out CO2 and trees breathe it in and then they breathe out oxygen and everything is in perfect harmony, but that's not the way it works. Mammals breathe out CO2 and the trees take that CO2 and break it down with photosynthesis, ejecting the O's and then they keep the C, okay? The C is carbon. They utilize this carbon to create, get this, carbohydrates and return the oxygen to the air. Can you guys guess what carbohydrates are? If you guess carbon and, and hydration, you're right. But you need to stop drinking Gatorade. Carbohydrates are used within the plant, giving it structure and form. 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 That's how trees grow. That's how they accumulate carbon. That's what wood is. So when these trees die, the carbon is re-released into the air through various methods of decay, including burning and just general decomposition. Think of trees as the air filters for your home, but instead of being able to just throw them out, you know, sight unseen, you had to keep them in your house. Every single one ever since your house is built. Eventually, these filters would start breaking down, re-releasing everything they caught back into the air. You know, you could put them in your crawl space, you could even bury them underground, you know, like where the oil and the coal already was just saying simply put trees are only a way to pause the damage we're causing they cannot reverse our situation planting trees is passing the buck on to another generation it's exactly what greta thunberg is upset about yet i still see these memes putting donaldson up on a pedestal as some sort of messiah one dollar equals one tree one dollar equals one tree join team trees Join our cult, plant trees, give money, plant money, beast, good, tree, good, beast, master. The trees don't matter. It's the way we live and creating half-ass causes that are technically a financial impossibility doesn't help. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Um, what I hope happens in this situation is that Mr. Beast, you know, finds some way to figure out accountability and does the right thing. Um, and I hope the Arbor Day Foundation provides some sort of transparency and they didn't just fleece, you know, donors out of $20 million thinking they were going to get 20 million trees. Um, so, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I want to thank my patrons. You're great. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, I got a shout out in a video recently from another YouTuber who is really good. I've got a reciprocation sort of thing planned for that. Um, you know, I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but we'll figure it out. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you like, don't if you don't. how long it would take to plant a tree, I use this clip and number as a baseline. You're killing it. Thank you. How many trees have you planted so far today? Um, I have dug 473 holes. Really? Yes. 
<laughs> How many like, did you do? <laughs> now, I know that seems like a lot, but the most efficient way of handling this is certainly some sort of assembly line digging planting situation. This would also double up the time considering each hole would need a digger and a planter. Since this video already has enough math for an entire semester of art school, I used this number and divided it over the course of 8 hours, conveniently resulting in 59.125 holes per hour, or you know, basically one hole every minute. Which means, yes Matt Pat, I beat you to the punch, I know how long it should take to plant 20 million trees, just under 40 million minutes. Now, let's put a dollar amount on those minutes. A living wage is at least $15 an hour. So we'll use that as our monetary baseline for estimating the labor cost. 40 million minutes is about 666,666.66 hours, which gives us a clean total of $10 million in labor. But that's just a theory. A tree theory! Eh.